Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Welcome back also to my main base area around the Spawn and Founders Forge where I have decided to return after spending a week with villagers. Last week we did a lot of very intensive village work and to be honest I was getting kind of sick of them. <laughs> it's also the case that we kind of ran up against a couple of obstacles which in terms of the bugs that are present in this version of the game should hopefully be fixed in Minecraft 1.14.1 which at the time of this recording is still a couple of days out but in terms of when this video is going out should potentially be released today. So there is every chance that we will revisit that village project once we are sure that a few of the bugs have been ironed out and we're able to do a little bit more with it. But for now, I think it's safe to say that we're going to do a little bit more work around here for a couple of episodes at least. The first thing I want to do though is actually kind of tied into what I experienced while I was over there at the village because I did a bit of trading with some armorers and some toolsmiths and while I was there I got myself a diamond chest plate which has both protection 2 and Blast Protection 1. Now you might be wondering, how exactly is this possible? Is this some sort of bug? Are the villagers trading bugged out armor? Because previously, the protection enchantments, including Blast Protection, Fire Protection, Regular Protection, and Projectile Protection, were not allowed to stack on the same piece of armor. However, that was apparently, according to some sources, at least never the intention with protection enchants. They were always supposed to stack and there was some kind of bug in the system that meant that they weren't and they didn't really bother fixing it for a while because just regular protection was enough. But now, as of Minecraft 1.14, it is possible to stack all of the protection enchantments on your pieces of armor, which means in addition to regular protection, you can get additional blast protection, projectile protection, fire protection, and so forth. Now, because I created this particular set of armor in Minecraft 1.13, I do not have all of the protection enchantments on this armor yet, and my inkling is that it might not be possible to add the rest of them because I've already done so much work on these pieces of armor, even though I haven't really repaired them all that often so the repair cost wouldn't be too high. I have enchanted these with, in some cases, five enchantments at a time, probably from separate books. And in the case of this one and this one, we actually have a few other enchants. Now, as you can see on the expanded set of data that we have here, which, by the way, you can enable and disable by pressing F3H. You'll see down there it says Advanced Tooltips Hidden. Let me show those one more time. You can see that it has three NBT tags, which is usually a pretty good indication of how many times you have applied enchantments to these pieces of armor. Now, I think we'll give it a try. I'm not certain if we might have to create a new set of armor from scratch, but what I want to do today is basically make the most powerful armor we can make, and that will include a chest plate. I don't normally wear a chest plate because I'm too busy using my elytra, but for the purposes of this demonstration and because we have one here in the backup gear, I'm thinking we might go all out on a chest plate as well. The increase in projectile protection would certainly help us against those pillagers, which people pointed out that I could have had a better time against had I worn a chest plate, but even so, it would be very nice to get some additional projectile protection on my leggings, helmet, and boots to go with that. So, I'm going to spend a fair amount of time over at my enchanting setup in the farmhouse, and we'll see what we can do to improve this armor. Now, because the regular protection enchantment is such a good all-rounder, I didn't used to go for any of the additional protection books when they came up in the enchantment table. So, on the occasion that I do have something like a projectile protection 4 book in here, it's usually because I wanted to just recycle the enchantment table so that it would come up with something a little bit different. I've got Blast Protection 2 books that I imagine were just level 1 enchants when I wanted to get something else. I have, yeah, a couple of projectile protections here and there, a couple of fire protections which I think are like glued onto other enchantments as far as these books go. Yeah, there we've got a fire protection 4 there, so we could potentially combine these, but... I really haven't gone for these enchantments all that much in the past, so it's going to be a little bit of luck if we end up getting them out of the enchanting table now. As you can see, we've got a Lure 3 book sat in there. That's not ideal. One of the other things I was able to get while I was over at the village was a couple of multi-shot enchantments, so I might as well try and enchant a couple more crossbows. I've gone back to using my bow for now, but we still have a quick draw crossbow that I uh, look forward to using a little bit more in future and 
I will aim to get a crossbow with multi-shot as well. I also got a bunch of efficiency books and five mending books while they were still available so cheap. Even though we have a full shulker box of them there, a good mending trade is one you can never really pass up in this game. So I've done a little bit of enchanting and am now the proud owner of a multi-shot crossbow, which is pretty cool. <laughs> you can't farm arrows like this, unfortunately. You'll only pick one of them up, but it's still pretty nice being able to fire three shots for the price of one. I think that's going to be something we'll have a little bit of fun with later, but for now, going to leave that in my backup gearbox. Unfortunately, I haven't been getting particularly lucky with the protection enchants. We've got a fire protection three book, and that was about it as we cycled through the table, but... It occurred to me that we should be making more use of the grindstone, which can be used to disenchant items that you don't want enchantments on anymore, and that includes books. Now, some of these more kind of like scrappy enchantments like Protection 1 are probably going to be fair game. I don't think it can be used to remove curses, though. So let me just test that in here. Yep, book still has Curse of Vanishing if we put it through there, whereas Protection 1, we can take this off the book, and we also get a little bit of experience back. Now, you'll notice I haven't exactly gone up a level or anything. The amount of XP I got back from that was minuscule compared to the amount that was probably required. And you'll notice the book has an NBT tag now, which means I can't stack it with the other books. It's probably best if we just throw this back in the enchantment table and try and get something else out of it. But that might be useful if you need a tiny amount of XP in a pinch, or if you just want to tidy up the rest of the books that you've got in here. Like this Luck of the, the Sea enchantment, I don't know if I'm going to really use that. Likewise, some of these Sharpness 3s here and there, I could combine them, but I might as well just get rid of the enchantment altogether and get a little bit of XP back if I don't plan on using them at all. The Smite 2s, the Flames, stuff like that, things that I really don't intend to use in future. Probably best if they either get combined or they get the enchantments wiped and ready to be enchanted again. But having combined that Fire Protection 4 book with the Projectile Protection 4 book, I can add that to my helmet now and it's going to cost me 16 levels to add those two. I need Blast Protection on this as well, but that is going to be one beast of a helmet, and it looks like adding Blast Protection might not be too bad, considering that that's 16 levels to enchant with this. Those two Power and Sharpness enchantments are just going to disappear, of course, but that is quite the list of enchantments for one piece of armor. I've never quite seen that outside of modded or some kind of glitch in the game giving you that many enchantments on a single piece, so that's really cool looking. Let's see if we can get ourselves some blast protection. I think I had a couple of these that I might be able to combine in here. Hmm, I can get blast protection three, but that's not quite enough. <laughs> I want to go all the way with this stuff. I want to get protection four on all of them. So, projectile protection there, yep. Looks like we're gonna have to take a trip to the Guardian farm and get some more levels. Well, I've been here for a couple of hours now. It's taken a while to get each of the protection enchantments onto a single book, but I now have Blast Protection 4, Projectile Protection 4, and Fire Protection 4 all on the same books. Got three of them. One of them had the Power and Sharpness enchants already, and I have a couple with just Fire and Projectile Protection on each. It's so difficult for some reason right now to get any kind of Blast Protection enchantment out of this table, but goodness knows I have tried. <laughs> I have tried a great deal. Now let's uh, let's take the armor off and let's see if I can get this on the three pieces of armor that I currently have. The levels on these are probably going to be quite high because we have so many enchantments on both the helmet and the boots. I still don't have the full set of enchantments that I want to put on a chest plate, but obviously these three are my priority because, as I mentioned before, I wear elytra quite a lot. So let's take a look for a diamond helmet and see if we can do this. 26 levels, okay, but that is the full repertoire of enchantments you could get on this helmet. There is nothing else that we could possibly add. That's pretty intense. Okay, 26 levels for that one. Now, how about 34 levels for the leggings? Okay, that's a lot, but it's still doable. And finally, the boots are too expensive, I should have guessed, because we have a lot of different stuff on here. We have Protection 4, Feather Falling 4, Unbreaking 3, Depth Strider 3, and Mending. And I imagine I've just repaired those or re-enchanted them one too many times. So, your best bet when this comes up is to enchant a bunch of diamond boots in an enchantment table first. So the basic enchantments are 
as many as you can get. If you're able to get Protection 4, Feather Falling 4, and Unbreaking 3 on some boots first time, and then you're able to compile a book that has the remaining enchantments, so Depth Strider 3, Mending, and these three, it is possible that you might be able to get all of these enchantments on boots as well. But obviously we're dealing with very high levels here, very high cost to combine these two items, and it just becomes too expensive in the long run. So the boots, we might have to give a miss. In that case, we might take out the chest plate and see if we can get the chest plate done as well. And yes, I know I only have five levels right now. I'll just take another trip back to the Guardian farm and get some more. Let's see what we can get. 22, okay, for the full works on a diamond chest plate. You know what? I think we might give that a go instead of the boots. Maybe try and use one of the other ones on the boots here so that we have just fire and projectile, maybe. Okay, that's going to be too expensive, even just like that. And it's always worth trying the other book as well because sometimes these things have extra costs attached to them, but no fire projectile or projectile fire. It's just going to be too expensive either way. Still not bad. Still not bad that we can get it on three out of the four, and maybe we can spend a bit of time re-enchanting the boots, but I think I'll be happy with just three pieces enchanted with all of these. There is definitely a cap above which these enchantments no longer offer any additional protection if you've got them on all of the pieces of your armor, so I think... It evens out better if you can enchant three pieces of armor with each of the enchantments and leave the fourth one, you know, to whatever you get. Obviously, I'm only wearing three pieces of armor because normally I wear elytra, so if I was to wear my full diamond suit, only three of the four protection enchantments that I had on all of the various pieces would really have any effect. If you want a bit more of the mathematical information about this, I recommend looking it up on the Minecraft wiki. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and get myself even more levels, and we're going to have to enchant ourselves some armor. So I forgot to clear out my inventory after I left the Guardian farm. It's a little bit full of fish and junk right now. Uh, let me put the salmon in there as well. But we've got enough levels to, I think, do two of the armor pieces, and I figured there was no point getting to, like, level 100 because it's a lot easier to go from 0 to 30 than it is to go from 30 to anywhere else, so I think we might as well just enchant a couple of these pieces now. And by a stroke of luck, I do also have a second set of boots in here with Protection 4, Feather Falling 4, and Mending, which I believe I got from an end city. So after we've done the three pieces I intend to enchant right now, the helmet, the chest plate, and the leggings, we might have a try at getting the best ever boots as well. Just got to make sure we have Unbreaking, Depth Strider, and the three other protection enchants on those. And it's also possible that if you go out end raiding now, you might find protection for and the other protection types stacking on pairs of boots that you find as loot. Not to mention finding protection types combined just by enchanting them in the enchantment table. I'm fairly certain that is possible now. Haven't tried it yet, but I guess we can probably try that another time. For now, I think let's take off the helmet and the leggings and let's see if we can get these enchanted. We've got one there with those three. That's going to be 30 levels. Oh my gosh, that's so high. <laughs> but look at the amount of enchantments we have on those. And then leggings for 34, even higher. And that takes us down to only three levels, but we are halfway to having the most powerful set of armor in the game. This is cool. This is very, very cool. And finally, a few more levels and a few more Dead Guardians later, we can make our final for now combination and only 22 levels this time. We can have the best chest plate I think I will ever wear. That's very, very heavily enchanted. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but combine that with the other ones we've got, I feel like there should be some kind of like <laughs> animation, some kind of flash of power, because this is really as good as it gets, aside from the boots. Now I am a little curious with the remaining levels that I have left, I've got 16, and I'm pretty sure thanks to a few of the more generous enchants that we got out of the table while I was grinding through for blast protection, etc. We should have a Depth Strider book there. We've got an Unbreaking 3 book there. Let's see if we can combine these with this book and maybe get ourselves another blast protection book. And then we will see if we can make the ultimate pair of boots to go with the set we already have. So far with what I've got, Depth Strider 3, Unbreaking 3, Fire Protection 4, and Projectile Protection 4, it is looking possible. 23 levels plus whatever the additional cost is once we add on the Blast Protection 4 enchant. 
that's looking pretty close to what we want. And I'm glad that this has Feather Falling and Depth Strider and not uh, Frostwalker because that would be a real pain. I don't want to wear Frostwalker boots all the time and still benefit from all of these enchants, but it just means grinding a little bit more for another Blast Protection. I don't think I even have any left in here. I think I got two Blast Protection, three books, and combined them. So as of the rest of this, I've got Depth Strider 3 and Projectile Protection 4 in there. But we have fire protection, we have regular protection, we don't have another blast protection book anywhere. And I'm fairly certain I don't have it anywhere in here as well. So I think we're going to have to do even more grinding for levels the amount of time I'm spending at my guardian farm today. It's been hours, but it's going to be worth it to have every single piece of armor powered up to the fullest extent that we can. Hello everyone, Pixelrush from the future here with a quick public service announcement about the Thorns enchantment. Now, I'm sure a few people have already not watched this far into the video yet, but they've already gone down into the comments and have asked what about Thorns, because I haven't mentioned it at all during this explanation. And here is why. I don't like the Thorns enchantment very much. It sounds useful in theory, but in practice for the kind of stuff I like to do in survival Minecraft, I'm not a really big fan. Now, to start off with, the maximum level of Thorns that you can get in Survival is actually Thorns 3. You will only ever find Thorns 1 and 2 coming out of an enchantment table, but if you combine them with a Thorns 2 book, you will end up getting Thorns 3. So that's the maximum level you can get of it on an enchantment. But having said that, it is a very expensive enchantment to add. I'm just adding Thorns to this otherwise unenchanted Diamond Helmet, and that's already costing me 12 levels. By comparison, adding Mending to this, a much more valuable enchantment as far as I'm concerned, only costs like three levels. So for a start, Thorns, pretty expensive. Secondly, if you add Thorns to all of the other enchantments I want to add to my boots right now, as an example, yeah, it gets pretty expensive. 67 levels is not possible to do in survival. Anything above 39 levels of enchantment cost, it's going to tell you in the anvil that it's too expensive. The only reason it's telling me the actual enchantment cost right now is because I'm in creative mode. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to go into survival mode. I'm in my creative test world, by the way. Didn't exactly make that clear, but here we are. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to add the thorns. Yep, immediately comes up as too expensive. Riotously expensive, in fact, and not really worth it, in my opinion. And here is my main reason why. A lot of the time when you're beyond that kind of like mid-range level of survival Minecraft, when you're kind of into the end game and you want to be messing around with mobs and creating mob farms and that kind of thing, having mobs not die when they hit you is actually kind of crucial. If you want to kind of put a mob in a specific area, if you're like trapping a zombie or something like that, having that zombie die because it's hit you too many times has been damaged in return by the thorns effect ain't that fun. It can be kind of frustrating, and that's why I tend to avoid the Thorns enchant whenever I play. Now, naturally, if you want to go for Thorns on your OP armor, go right ahead, but let me give you a quick example of why I don't do it. I'm going to spawn an Endermite right now, and Endermites are actually really useful to have in Enderman farms because they act as bait to bait the Enderman towards a certain area where you can gather them and kill them. Endermites are quite difficult to actually get because you have to throw a bunch of enderpearls before one will even show up, and they are very fragile creatures. I spawn one in right now, I'm in survival mode so it's going to attack me, but the thorns on my armor kills it in two hits. <laughs> so imagine the frustration involved with trying to make an enderman farm, having thorns on all of your armor, and the endermite just dying over and over again as you try and finagle it into a minecart to make your ideal enderman farm. That is why I don't play with thorns. Obviously, if it's your Minecraft game, do it the way you want, knock yourself out. But in my estimation, thorns really isn't worth it, and that's why I'm excluding it from this equation of the most OP armor in the game. It's not a protective enchantment, it just damages the mobs when they damage you, and I don't always want that. Hope that makes sense. Back to the video. And finally, after a lot of time, a couple of cups of tea and a live stream later, I have, at long last, whichever chest I put it in here, we have the boots, we have the book, and I have tested it. And this right here 
is going to cost us 35 levels. So I got 36. I wanted one left over. But look at these boots. These boots are incredible. These boots are made for pretty much everything. They have every conceivable enchant that would be worthwhile to have on boots, aside from, of course, Frostwalker, which is not compatible with Depth Strider, which is definitely the kind of boots I prefer. So, with one fell swoop and 35 levels, we have ourselves the best armor in the game. If I swap those boots for those and put the diamond chest plate on, I am basically bomb-proof at this point in time, and to prove it, I think we're going to go back to Founders Forge and do some explosives testing. Don't worry if you saw this on fire, by the way. I actually have been spending so much time over here at the Guardian Farm that the storage here is completely backed up. It has absolutely every single chest and hopper full, aside from this one that I've just cleared out some space in. I have way too much stuff here, so I decided to install a kind of impromptu uh, <laughs> trash at the end here and any items that make it that far along the water stream just end up going straight into the fire and getting killed, <laughs> getting despawned. Um, I could easily do that with a cactus or a uh, like a lava pocket or something in there. If you want some kind of means of destroying items at the end of a water stream like that, I recommend using cactus because if you've got fire tick off in your world, it's fine to have fire here, but if fire spread is still turned on, you stand to set a lot of stuff around here on fire, which is probably not ideal. So maybe a cactus if you've got one to hand, but for me, a fire works because I have fire spread turned off, so don't need to worry about my entire Guardian farm burning down or anything. But as you can see, the Guardians are still falling, so I'm going to make my escape, head back to Founders Forge, and let's test this stuff out. So I've come out here to the most blastable place in my base, the quarry. <laughs> I figure we're going to do a little bit of explosives testing here, since this is the episode where we introduced TNT and explosives. And we're going to start off basically by detonating some TNT at point blank range. I'm going to put my full armor protection on. We've got blast protection four on each of these pieces of armor as well as that stacking with protection four. And I think there is, like I said, a limit to exactly how much extra protection we're going to get. I'm pretty sure only three of these pieces will really count to adding towards our blast protection. But here's hoping that when this goes off with a bang, we're going to feel virtually nothing. Boom! We got a little bit lifted in the air, but that was only three hearts of damage from a point-blank TNT explosion. Now, I know what you're thinking, TNT ain't all that, and that is why I have brought something a little bit more volatile with me. We're going to test this out with an end crystal and see if I could survive punching one of these at point-blank range. Now, I'm going to make sure I am fully healed up before I do this. And I have also, I've taken a backup of the world because <laughs> I don't want all of this effort to quite go to waste. But it feels like I should be able to do this. And I've survived with a heart and a half left. But that is something that will absolutely destroy you if it happens. Wow. Wow, my goodness. That was quite a rush. <laughs> that was genuinely a little bit frightening when we did that. But you know what? We survived, and I think that, if nothing else, is proof that we now have the most powerful armor in the game. If we can survive an end crystal full in the face, then that is basically as powerful as it gets in vanilla Minecraft, at least. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at creating the, the god-tier armor of Minecraft, and I hope you guys will enjoy using that in your worlds. You can go up against basically anything now, just be careful of those mobs. But as before... Skeletons will do much less damage to you now. Pillagers won't be able to do as much damage. You probably won't get as much damage from stuff like shulkers as well. So yeah, good to good to have this armor all round. My name has been Pixel Rifts. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.